What's up everybody, Jason for Vasa Productions. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this lower third using the new shape tools inside DaVinci Resolve Fusion. Coming up. All right, so let's make this lower third. We're inside the edit tab of DaVinci Resolve. I've got some B-roll here, just a little interview segment. I'm gonna drag that down into the timeline. I'm going to go to the 10 second mark right here and shorten the clip right to 10 seconds, just like that. So now it's a 10 second clip. Let's make this lower third by grabbing a fusion composition over here in effects in the toolbox right here. You can see a fusion composition, just grab that, drag that over the clip right here. And by default, this is five seconds. We're gonna leave it right at five seconds. Let's jump over to the fusion tab by left clicking right here. We've got our media out. Let's take that and drag it over to the right a little bit. We need a background to start this off. So we're gonna come over to background here, take its output and drag it into the media out like this and let go, just like that. Come over to background, select it, bring its alpha down to zero so it's transparent. We can see right through that background like it's not even there. Come over to tools now, click on that, come to shape. And here are the new shape tools. We need a rectangle to start this off and I'll show you how to make the shape. But we've got a rectangle here. The next thing I'm gonna need is going to be a render node, an S render, shape render. So we're gonna take that shape render, we're gonna bring it right here. I'm gonna take the rectangle, I'm just gonna move it up a little bit. I'm gonna grab a shape merge, bring that right here, and take my shape rectangle and pipe that into the shape merge, and take the shape merge and pipe it into the shape render. Now to get that over our background, we take the output of the shape render and pipe it into the output of the background and that merges it over the top of our transparent background. Now, we're gonna take the shape rectangle and the merge, just move it over a little bit like this. And we're gonna change the color of this rectangle and its shape and size. So come up here to style, left click on the white color here and then I've got blue right here. I'm just gonna left click on blue. You can take any color you want. I'm gonna hit okay. Now I need to change the height and width of this thing, it's too big. Come over to controls here, change the width a little bit, and let's bring the height down, and let's change that width a little bit more, just like that, and we'll give it just a hair more height. Now let's move this thing around and position it on the screen. So let's just bring this over here like this, and now we've put that in place. The next thing that we wanna do is we just wanna take this shape rectangle right here, and we wanna make a copy of it. So I'm gonna hit Command C on a Mac, and then Command V to paste. And now what I'm gonna do is just take another shape merge node from here and connect it right here, and then take this shape rectangle and pipe it right into the shape merge right there. Now let's label these so we know which one is which, right? So this shape rectangle right here, I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna rename it. We're gonna call this white outline. And then I'm gonna name this one, right click on the original one, blue rectangle. So we know which one is which. Now we have to actually make that outline that we showed before. So highlight this, drag it up a little bit. Come over here to shape outline, just left click on it. And we've got nothing right now, right? It looks a little bit weird. But if I come over here to thickness like this, you can see it's making this bigger. I just need to change the color of the white outline right here. So select the white outline, come up to style, hit the blue, and let's just change this to white. I'm just gonna come over here to shape outline right here and select that and change the thickness and really bring that thickness down like that. The next thing I have to do is figure out how to change this from a rectangle into the shape that we want for our lower third. So it's more unique, it's not just a rectangle, right? Resolve doesn't really have tools inside here to do this easily. So I'm gonna come over to shape render and I'm gonna come over here to rectangle mask and just take this, bring it down, take the output of the rectangle mask and bring it into the S render. Now we've completely lost our lower third, but that's not what we're trying to do. We're just gonna come over here, drag it over here like this, and now all I have to do is change the angle here. So I'm changing the angle like this. If I change the width of the mask, we can cut off the corners of the shape rectangle, right? So now we have a little bit more of what we're looking for. Now that we have our lower third shaped with our rectangle right here, let's come over to shape outline and let's just make this a little bit thinner right there. Okay, just drag that a little bit. Come back to white outline right here and for border width, drag it to the right. And now you can see, right, that's how we get the separation 
from the original rectangle. So we're just kind of spreading that out. So now we have something that looks kind of cool. The next thing that I need to do is I need to add a drop shadow to this. So come down here, scroll down, select all three of these nodes, bring them down a little bit. You can't add the drop shadow in here, okay? What I need to do is take the drop shadow and bring it down here under the S render. So just hit shift and spacebar, drop shadow, type that in, hit add, okay? It's not in there by default. Hold down shift and left click on your mouse and just drag it here until it turns blue, let go. And then we've got a drop shadow that's showing up right there. So that looks pretty good. I wanna take that uh, drop distance down just a little bit. So it's a little more concise right there. Now, all that I need to do is add the text and the name and the title of the person. So drag the drop shadow up a little bit, come down here to text, drag this into the space, take the output of the text, drag it right into the drop shadow. That's gonna create a merge. See that merge right there? Just left click and drag the merge right here. Take your text, right click on it, rename. Let's put name right there, type that in. We're gonna type Chris King right there. And you can see the text doesn't line up with the actual lower third. We're gonna change that, we're gonna fix that. So let's come over here to Open Sans and just select Open Sans Condenser. At least that's the text and font I like a lot. Drag his name right here. Okay, so now we've positioned his name. Let's just make his name a little bigger by taking the size and increasing that just a little bit. And that might be a little too big. Let's bring it back down a little bit. And the next thing I'm gonna do is get this one out of the way a little bit and take another text node, drag that in right here and pipe that in right to the end of that one right there. So we have a merge. So we have his name here and then the title is gonna be right here. So I'm gonna rename this title, there we go. And then his title, right, he's a realtor. And we're gonna change that, or at least I prefer the Open Sans Condensed. Bring that down into here. Take the size, let's really bring that size of that down quite a bit, just like that. So it's not overpowering his name, okay? And then all I have to do is animate, you know, these different things. So what I'm gonna do is actually come down here. I'm gonna work within the animation of this first, and then I'll do the rest of the name stuff. So come down here just for a second. Let's take a transform node, hold it right here until it turns blue. And I'm gonna actually have this animate on by the 24th frame. Come over here to settings, left click, select motion blur, come up to controls, hit this keyframe, come to frame zero, and bring his name completely off the screen. Come up to spline, Click transform, left click here, and click and drag with your mouse over these keyframes, let go. Hit S to smooth, hold down option on a Mac, Alt on Windows, and drag that one over. Now this is what we have so far. Just like that, if we hit the space bar to play. Looks pretty good, right? I like it. So let's come back here to the name now and his title and let's animate those things real quick. All we have to do to make this animation appear a little more smooth is come down here to the mask, left click and drag this over here, take its output and drag it into this merge right here. Voila, our name and our title are gone. So here's the mask right here, drag it down over the name and the title right now, we can see everything. Bring that right here like this and just squeeze it down like this and we'll just bring it in for good measure right to about here. Now, I'm gonna come up to this mask and take the soft edge and bring it to the right a little bit, about to 0.18, okay, in that neighborhood. Now I'm gonna animate his name. So the lower third comes on by frame 24. Let's have his name come on by frame 42. His name will come on at 42. Take the name right here, come up to center, hit this keyframe. Let's come back to frame 24. And now let's take his name and bring it up. There it goes, it disappears inside of that mask. Come to settings, select motion blur, left click on spline here, and then we've got our keyframes, right? Left click and drag over the keyframes, S to smooth, hold option and drag that over like this. And let's watch that real quick. And his name comes down real smooth, right? That's what we want. Uncheck spline, come down to title, layout, Select the keyframe here, come back to frame 24. And we could have Realtor come on before, but let's have it come on at the exact same time. We'll just do that for now and bring this down like this. We could always change it if we don't like it, right? Come to settings, motion blur, 
spline and left click and drag here. Ask to smooth, select the handle here, drag it over to smooth it a little bit more. And our animation looks like this. I like it, I think it looks pretty smooth, especially we haven't spent that much time creating this, right? Now to animate this off the screen, we come back to our original transform one right here. Come to the last frame, which is gonna be right around 120. It's gonna come off the screen in 24 frames, so it's gonna be frame 96 right here. Hit the keyframe, come over here, left click and drag off the screen just like this. Come to settings, it's already motion blur selected, so we can just select spline, left click here, left click over these, let go, S to smooth. Let's make this a little bigger, a little easier to drag that handle. Hold Option, Alt on Windows, Option on Mac, drag it over, and we have an animation that looks like this. We've made a lower third pretty quickly and pretty easily. That comes on the screen and then right back off the screen. Now you notice the playback isn't the greatest. I'm on an M1 Mac Mini. It's only got 16 gigabytes of RAM in it, right? So it has good performance considering the specs, but a little bit of choppy playback. So right click here, unselect motion blur and high quality, take those off and you'll see it plays in real time without those two things selected, right? And we can watch it. And that animation's nice and smooth now. All right, let's go back over to the edit tab and watch this now. All right, so here we have our animation coming on the screen nice and smooth. I really like the way that that looks. Very clean. And it's a nice little slick lower third using the new shape tools inside DaVinci Resolve. All right, so that wraps it up for how to use the new shape tools to create this custom lower third. If you found this video helpful or you feel like you learned something today, make sure you smash that like and subscribe button. I'm Jason for Vasa Productions. We'll see you next time.